How is everybody doing? Survived? Still going on with the celebrations? More people to visit if you are in the position to do so? Thank you. If you have taken the time to stop whatever you're doing or while you're doing what you're doing, doesn't it? It's with me. Thank you for being here because this is not conventional Christmas work <laughs> or Christmas cleanup, but it is for me because my orchids take priority over many, many things and they don't know a public holiday, just like pets don't know public holidays. They still need their rhythm and their maintenance and their care. And today's task for me is to address different stages of sheath cleanup. This is my Chantilly lace and she's starting to dry up at the base. I'd like to take care of that before it gets too hard and bringing her out, look at this. There's something, I would say inadvertent commas, but she's trying to bloom. My goodness, if that even were to happen, what a miracle that would be because she is not a big plant, but she's trying. And uh, you see, I've addressed some of the pest issues. I've already doused her with some alcohol down here in the apex. All these little guys are dead. So they've been drying out outside. But what we're going to do now in her case is wet the base so that there's a little bit of give for me to take off those sheaths. The next candidate is my Siamese doll Kiwi also going to wet the base. But here you see I have still a green sheath and then sort of substantially getting browner and darker and a little bit more tough, but they're not hard yet. So perfect timing, we'll get those off. And this growth is mature enough now for me also to take the green off, which makes it much easier because can you believe it? Look at this after Christmas and she is in bud on her third growth of the season, but mainly grown through the winter months. That's insanity. After I'm messing around with her, I wonder if those buds will blast, but there's only one way to find out and that is to take care and get it done. My next example is a catacetum back here with a green yellowing leaf, but still good enough and soft enough to remove. And I have here my Lord of Jesse I crossed with Skinnery. Same case as the Chantilly Lace. I have a base here that is growing brown and I want to get rid of that layer as well. Sorry for jiggling the tripod there. And then one case that is a little bit more difficult, but not impossible. This is my René Marquez crossed with Digbiana and all this is coming off. So I have my microfiber here and it is soaked with insecticide, taking care of two things at once. And one of them is softening the hard sheath outer coating or residue or remainders of the leaves plus insecticide in case maybe something decided to hatch itself into that fiber and decide to hatch one day and I'm not having it. So if I'm going to soak them anyway before I take it off, I'm going to soak it in insecticide and softened it at the same time. Now, because it's so long and the microfiber is heavy with liquid and it has to remain there for some time, I'm just gonna support some of it up against the stem with a little bit of wire, just so that it doesn't unravel on me. Because what I'm going to do next then is keep watering as I work on the other ones. So this one is last, and we started with the Chantilly lace. So let's go have a look, see how easily that comes off. 
And if I can do that on camera, that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> right. I still have remnants of an old sheath right here. That is coming off relatively easy. And so as not to scratch things with my nails, which I have done, yes. Broken somewhat the surface of the membrane. I'll just use a cloth also soaked in insecticide. I will leave the details of the main ingredients of my insecticide in the description below because I can mention a brand. It's called Neudorf, but it, chances are that brand is not existing all over the world. So with the ingredients, maybe it's a better guideline. Hello, voice. No, I haven't been singing. You see how easy it comes off, even though it is brown? It is not yet hard, and it feels a little bit like gelatin in the hands when you take them off at this stage. And in case the fingers get a little bit too fat for my liking, let's get some tweezers in there. So I hope you had fabulous Christmas days. And if you're still recovering, thank you very much for joining me and watching me peel away sheaths, which I find oddly satisfying. I like to have clean bulbs, not just for aesthetic purposes, but for control purposes as well. Let's see, now that leaf is in the way. It is still in the way. <laughs> There we go. Got a nice root growing there and more roots coming out, so I don't want to destroy that. But I may have to water it down again in order to get this little layer off. There we go. Good enough, good enough. And how are we doing on this side? See all these lines there? I believe that was me using my nail at a time that was not very conducive to the stage of the hard sheath. So that's Chantilly done for now. Let's move on to Siamese Doll Kiwi and see if this is not a little bit easier starting from the bottom. I don't suspect there to be a new growth down there just yet because clearly she is still trying to bloom again, which is nice. But just in case, you never know. I have pulled a rough sheath once all the way from the top to bottom, not expecting it to come off in one go. And boom. So let me change that angle a little bit. There, that's better for all of us and get in there. Not sure what I'm seeing. I'm trying to keep the receiver away from my mic so that there is no crackling. So I'm hoping all this is in shot. gets easier and easier when the sheaths are not brown yet. And when they don't come off with a membrane, then you can actually get a handle on the part of the sheath and it turns like a curly whirly as you pull it down. It might not do it in this case because clearly I'm trying to show you. There we go. Not yet. No, that ripped off. It's like a lady's stocking that's lost its elastic band on the top.
So I'm just going to stop here because you see how wet the green sheath is. And especially in winter, that can uh, perpetuate itself into some rot issues. I mean, I have enough aeration for the time being. We've had a very mild temperatures. The terrace door has been open. But this is so wet that it can turn into rot. It won't dry out necessarily. And that is danger zone. So once the bulb is mature and the sheath is not brown yet, it is quite okay to get rid of that, especially during the colder months of the year. You're not doing any damage to it. It has matured. It doesn't need that protection anymore. So if you do find some resistance and you want to be pedantic about it, these little sheaths down here would normally just eventually dry off and become like little flakes that you can just brush off easily. But if you want to be pedantic about it, you can also just go and cut into the surface a little bit and then just start to unravel it. And you pull it up. And you see how tough the inner membrane is. There we go. And then you can just unravel it. That's what I meant by curly whirly. If you unravel it, it sort of goes round and round on its in on itself. This is what it looks like after it's dried out, that little part. It just becomes really flaky and comes off much easier. So Siamese doll kiwi, all nice and clean. Wonderful. So let's move on to my catacetum here. Green leaf. Some yellowing. Of course, it's going, it's in dormancy now. So what I do here is just take the leaf off at the base, membrane and all, which comes off much, much easier when it's still got some juice and life left in it. And in this way, the bulbs can harden themselves off towards the light as well, because I don't have to worry then in the summer, with a certain degree of caution, of course, that I'm exposing these bulbs that are fresh, right exposed from the removal of the leaf, and I'm exposing them to harsh light. They can now harden off nicely during the winter, and there shouldn't be an issue, again, within reason, for the bulb to burn in the sun while it now hardens off. And I can just go on and on, trying to get these off as best as I can to make my bulbs look all nice and shiny. And no issues for spider mites to either hang out, lay their eggs in order to then get going in the summer months with the new growth. So if it's a little bit fresher, if it still has some green on it, the catacetum is going to sleep anyway. So some people say, well, they cut their leaves off anyway to encourage dormancy. Well, I do that, but I want to take off any of these extra membranes while I can and while the work is not as difficult and I still get quite a bit of it off. I'm just very, very mindful about not damaging the bulb with my nails because there it is quite tender. It has to be taken into consideration when doing this task to remember that, yes, the bulbs seem fleshy and firm, but everything around here is still tender. You can see the bulbs it came with, I didn't get them as clean. This is what they came with. These are the ones that I grew this season. And then once it dries off, it just, you would have to take a cloth and wipe and wipe and wipe and wipe. And just doesn't look, it just doesn't look as fancy. There's one thing though that I just saw and I wanted to point that out. 
too aggressive pulling, you can take the membrane and the top surface of the bulb off, which is a shame, of course. So careful when taking off the green leaves, not to pull too hard. And that's what I mean. The bulbs might be super, super fleshy and hard, but they're tender. So we'll take care of that and I'll finish no, I can finish now. It's done. There we go. Birdie. Right, we have one more candidate before going to the René Marquez cross. This is my Lodi Jessii that I got from the orchid room. Crossed with Skinnery. And the new growth has matured beautifully. You can see the outer sheath there, but I want to, before it starts, another new growth, I would like to get this off as well. Because they have quite tender growths at the base. And I don't want any winter humidity to sneak in there and make a mess of this new growth. Very, very carefully, based on the tender, tender bases that they have. See, there's a new growth underneath and we're good to go we're fine this was good timing there we go and what I could do is take this one off as well but because in this case the growth is so tender and let's say spiddly it still has to harden off a little bit I have achieved what I've wanted to remove there's no need to go in with this one not the same case as with the Siamese doll kiwi because the growth is of a completely different stature. There's, it's not hardened off yet. The Siamese doll kiwi was hardened off. So we'll wait. And it's loose. It's loose against that growth. So we can wait with that one. Now let's see. I still think it's a little bit too soon to remove the sheaths of the Digbiana cross. And there's only one way to find out, and that is to do it. You can see where I've done one before, a couple of months ago, and how tough they are to even to get off once they've been soaked. Eventually this part does dry out, and then it can be peeled off or left depending, but it certainly has a little bit more access on a visual basis with regards to any possible pests that have hidden underneath. And that is just now nail damage. I just did a scratch there, although it was very light. I'm sure that's going to leave a mark. It's not detrimental to the orchid, but even a hardened off growth is very tender, so I have to be mindful, not do it at all, or use a cloth like I'm doing now. And I prefer to do it and be mindful as opposed to not doing it at all.
So if the membrane doesn't come off all the time, then it's not a problem because eventually this is what's going to happen to it. That really fine membrane that can be a little bit of a pain to get off when it's fresh and tight around the pseudobulb becomes very flaky. And in the next time or go around, it's very dry and easily removed. Hey, <laughs> there we go. That's better. They're all pretty now. And at least I can see what's going on with you. I can fiddle and fuss a lot longer. This is something that I seriously enjoy doing. A little bit of peace and quiet. And I could go on and on and on, but for the sake of this video, I want to thank you very, very much for watching and for spending time with me. Maybe relaxed now in a recliner and wish you a wonderful, wonderful day. Enjoy the holidays, the rest in peace and quiet, I hope. Take care, everybody. Please stay safe. Bye.